Shapes My Street Food Superstar Supreme Sandwich Shawarma, Lebanese Style. Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen is made possible by... Do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. succulent, spicy, saucy, and shaved off a spit, shawarma is one of Lebanon's and the Middle East's most signature street food star supreme sandwiches throughout the international and the American street food scene. Translating to turn or to rotate, shawarma is thinly sliced luscious lamb meat that is mixed with caramelized onions and stewed tomatoes, then smothered in maitangi tahini sauce and traditional tasty toppings, all wrapped up in warm pita bread, making this special street food star sandwich something that you'll want to create, make, and taste time and time again, right at home and no rotisserie needed. It's succulent, it's spicy, it's saucy. It's shawarma, my supreme street food star sandwich. Lebanon and the Middle East are known for some of the most famous street food stars in the world and now thankfully in America too. And today we are making one of the most delicious sandwiches of all time and it's simply called shawarma. There's many ways to say it and there's many ways to spell it but I have the most delicious way to make it right at home. And the word shawarma literally just translates to turn or to rotate which if you frequent a lot of different Lebanese or Middle Eastern or Mediterranean eateries or restaurants out there, you've probably come across a beautiful big piece of meat that's sort of rotating and rotisserie uh, spinning around and round and round and round. But today I'm going to show you how to make it right at home and there's no spit needed. So I have begun taking a sharp small paring knife just like so and I'm making slits into this beautiful boneless leg of lamb meat that I have right before me. You can also use beef. You can blend the two meats, the lamb and the beef, but I'm gonna go traditional today with our lamb, our luscious lamb meat. And now I'm going to grab some garlic cloves that I have right over here. They're absolutely beautiful. And we're just gonna sort of slide those into the slits that we've made. And this is going to add a lot of flavor, a lot of garlic flavor right inside the lamb meat. Our lamb meat looks beautiful. We have our garlic cloves just sort of slid right into those slits. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get them into our marinating bowl just like this. Look how beautiful this looks, right? You guys are just gonna love this recipe. I can't wait for you guys to make it at home. I need to give my hands a quick rinse here. Make sure that I Wash them thoroughly, okay, very nice. All right, and now we're gonna get to our marinade. And we're gonna use about a half a cup of olive oil and red wine vinegar. If you have white wine vinegar, then you can also use that as well. And the juice of one lemon. And this is gonna give a lot of nice sort of tangy flavor to the lamb meat. Okay, that looks beautiful. And now for our spices, which really makes shawarma shawarma, <laughs> we're gonna grab our sea salt and our freshly ground pepper. I'm gonna make sure to generously season this. So it's about one tablespoon of sea salt and one tablespoon of freshly ground pepper. Beautiful, it's looking good already. 
And now for our spices, we're using one of my favorite spices, which is our allspice. It's gonna give a nice warmth to our lamb. Beautiful. And we're also gonna go for some cinnamon. That was about one tablespoon of allspice, by the way. And we're gonna use about half a tablespoon of cinnamon. Sort of all of these beautiful earthy colors. <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, sort of landscape, the terrain in Lebanon itself. We have some nutmeg as well, about half a tablespoon. And also some clove, nice and woodsy. Another half a tablespoon of this. All of these spices you can actually find pretty much in your local grocery store or supermarket too. There's a couple like our sumac spice, which you can find at Middle Eastern or Mediterranean specialty food stores. And the sumac really makes the shawarma shawarma, I feel. It has a really nice lemony sort of tart, tangy flavor. And that's really kind of the flavors and the notes that you'll find in a really true authentic shawarma sandwich. And look at that beautiful crimson sort of color too. Get a little bit more sumac. <laughs> Just because I love it so much. And also, we're gonna use a little bit of our cardamom, which kind of come in these whole pods. You can also find it uh, finely ground, too. But I'm just gonna take a couple and kind of just pound them out a little bit with the back of my knife, just to release the flavor. Gives a nice richness. And add those in as well. And we're gonna use our tongs, we're gonna sort of just lift the lamb meat up and sort of flip it around a little bit in the bowl. Make sure to kind of really work the lamb into the liquids and the spices. So now I'm just gonna cover it with a nice big sheet of plastic wrap that we have right over here. You wanna let it marinate overnight, preferably in the refrigerator, or at least six to 12 hours if you can. Okay, so we're gonna get this in the refrigerator right over here. <laughs> and luckily, I have one that we have been marinating overnight. Just wanna show you guys how beautiful this looks. The lovely reveal, look at that. It really has become nice and tender with all of those spices and all of the oils and red wine vinegar and lemon, and we are gonna get it onto our roasting rack. But first, I'm gonna sort of create a nice sort of onion bed uh, for this lamb meat to kind of lie upon. So we're gonna grab a big, nice Spanish yellow onion. We're also gonna grab a red onion as well. And one shallot, sort of my three favorite onions. <laughs> So we're gonna get our aromatics into the bottom of our roasting pan that I have right over here. We're gonna remove the rack like I just did. And now we're gonna split apart all of our red onions and our yellow onions and our shallots. So they cover the entire bottom of the roasting pan. Okay, beautiful. Get all of our onions in. And then I also have some uh, hot water in my teapot that's been kind of boiling away. We're going to add about a couple cups. Now we're gonna get our roasting rack right back on top. We're gonna grab our lamb meat that's been marinated. Lift it right out of that bowl. Beautiful, big piece of meat, just like that. So now we're gonna get this into the oven. I have it preheated at 425 degrees. It's gonna slowly roast for about an hour and 30 minutes. It's basically 20 to 25 minutes per pound. And because we have five pounds of meat in our beautiful boneless leg of lamb meat that we have here, that works out to be about an hour and 30 minutes. a shawarma sandwich without some tasty toppings. And today we're making some of my favorites of all time for our shaved meat sandwich. It's gonna be so succulent. I have these beautiful red bell peppers right before me and we're gonna roast them up. Just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil right on those skins just like that. And some sea salt too, just like that. 
Gonna roll them around a little bit so all the sides are evenly coated with the olive oil and the sea salt. Beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna get these in the oven. So we're gonna let those red bell peppers fire roast under the broiler for about 10 to 12 minutes and we're gonna periodically turn them through, you know, over on all sides so that they char evenly. And now we're gonna get to some onions. I have some beautiful Vidalia onions that we're gonna caramelize and I have some tasty tomatoes on the vine there too. Now it's time for our tasty tomatoes, and I'm using, it's a shocker, I know, my tomatoes on the vine. <laughs> I do use other tomatoes too, but I do love the tomatoes on the vine. They're just so juicy and just so delicious. Okay, that does it for our tomatoes. Now we're gonna get these cooking, so I'm just gonna start with a little bit of olive oil in both of our saute pans that we have right over here. I'm gonna make sure to coat our vegetables really well. We're gonna scoop up all of our Vidalia onions. Get those in our big saute pan. Now we're just gonna scoop up all of our delicious tomato on the vine slices. Get those into our smaller saute pan, just like that. Oop, one fell out. <laughs> it's gotta get back in there. And the juices as well. Juices are really gonna make this topping delicious. And now we're just gonna get our heat on to low. We want them just to nicely sort of slowly cook down. I smell that our roasted red peppers are just about done. So we're gonna get our bowl ready to meet and greet them. And we're gonna grab them from the oven. It smells so amazing in this kitchen between the roasted red peppers and our Lamb meat, woo, smoky, fire roasted. <laughs> Gonna turn off our heat. Look at these beauties. They're nice and charred, I would say, right? Okay, we're just gonna get them into our bowl. Just beautiful, beautiful char that we got in those bell red peppers. Just cool off a little bit. And now what we wanna do for our roast red peppers is we just wanna grab a sheet of plastic wrap we're gonna cover these, we're gonna tightly cover them, just like this. And you can see that we're sort of locking in that steam, which is going to help to sort of soften the skin even more and also help to release the char uh, from the flesh of the roasted red peppers. So we're just gonna set these aside on our countertop and now we're gonna get back to our onions and our tomatoes and we need to season these up a little bit with a little bit of sea salt. Beautiful, they smell so good. Such a flavorful kitchen today. The lamb meat roasting, we had our roasted red peppers, now we've got our stewed tomatoes and our caramelized onions. I'm gonna grab a little bit of sumac spice too because I want to sort of enhance that sumac spice flavor from the lamb meat and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of these onto our onions. A little bit of the sumac spice. Sort of Nice and lemony, tart and tangy. Just delicious. Beautiful. Now we're just going to sort of toss these around a little bit. Sort of multitasking today in the kitchen, right? <laughs> Got so many things cooking away. But it's nice because then everything hopefully will be done around the same time. They smell out of this world, absolutely out of this world in this kitchen today. And now by this time our roasted red peppers have really steamed away and softened away as well. We're just going to place these on our board, just like so. Get them lined up. <laughs> Lovely. All right, so now what we want to do, you can actually just sort of pull out the stem just like that out of each one of these. And what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna slice them down the center. You can see they're still sort of steamy, but I have cook's hands, so if you wanna leave them for a little bit longer until they're a little bit more manageable for you, you can definitely do that too. And now using a sharp, small paring knife, I'm just gonna kind of lay it flat on our board. 
and peel off the charred skin with your fingers and with the paring knife. You can see how easily it lifts up for you. Okay, beautiful, just like that. And you can kind of use the kind of back of that sharp paring knife just to scrape it away. Okay, beautiful. And then also just flip it over. And again, using kind of the edge of the paring knife, you can just sort of scrape away any seeds. All right, now we're just going to simply slice the roasted red pepper into thin slices kind of mimicking and mirroring, I should say, the onions and the tomatoes. Just like that. Beautiful. Our roasted red peppers look absolutely perfect. They're perfect peppers. And now I'm gonna get them into our onions. I just wanna shift our onions over a little bit. They're gonna go in the same pan, on one side of the pan, actually. Yummy! Looking good in this Julie Tabuli kitchen today. <laughs> okay, so actually at this point, the onions and the tomatoes are both done, so I'm just gonna turn off our heat. And our toppings need a sauce, right? We're gonna be making our tasty tahini sauce that's just gonna smother the toppings and our shaved meat sandwich that I just can't wait for and I can't wait to share it with you guys. And speaking of our shaved meat, I can smell our roasted lamb meat sort of slowly roasting away and it smells absolutely delicious. And I wanna make sure that we baste it with all of those delicious juices on the bottom of the pan. We are going to be making our tasty tahini sauce. It's our signature sesame seed sauce that is a very traditional sauce in Lebanese and Middle Eastern cooking. And it's going to be an absolutely delicious sauce that's going to smother our shaved meat sandwich. So I have three cloves of garlic, and we're going to just simply place these in our food processor. And I'm also stepping up our signature sesame seed sauce, our tahini sauce, with the addition of some fresh flat leaf parsley that I have right over here. It Smells so fresh. <laughs> and also some fresh nana, our fresh spearmint leaves too. And we're gonna give this a nice whirl. We wanna sort of finely mince. Okay, beautiful. Now we are going to add our tahini. And let's talk about tahini, shall we? Uh, it's a sesame seed paste. And as you can see, it just has this beautiful sort of like light uh, caramel color to it. And you can kind of just shake it a little bit if it's a small jar like this. It's a good idea also to stir it with a spoon too. Again, you just want to sort of incorporate the oil that naturally settles to the top of the jar with the paste. And I just want you guys to see this is really what you're going for when you're looking for a tahini paste. You want it to be nice and smooth and fluid, just like that, okay? Nice and creamy. We're gonna pour about one cup of our tahini paste. I'm just gonna eyeball it, just like that. Beautiful. And we're also gonna add ice cold water. This is just gonna help sort of to get this whole sauce going. It's gonna help to break down the paste a little bit before we add all of our fresh lemon juice. Gonna get a lid back on and we're gonna give this a whirl. Okay, beautiful, let's check on it. Okay, you can see that it's nice and sort of like fluid and nice and creamy, which is exactly what we're going for. And now we want to add some fresh lemon juice. Just like that. And we also want to season it with some sea salt. And now we're just going to sort of let it whirl and come into this nice, smooth, creamy sauce. Okay, let's check on it. Ooh, looks perfect. 
It looks delicious. You can see that nice sort of creamy consistency and it has the subtle hits of garlic sort of running in the background and then those fresh flavors of the parsley and the mint. I just want to give it a quick taste to make sure that we're on point with our sauce. The sauce is key for me whenever I'm making the tahini sauce, whether it's for the falafel or our shawarma sandwich or anything really that we're calling for the tahini sauce. Mm. Our tasty tahini sauce tastes out of this world. I love how lemony it is with a little bit of garlic in the background and all of those fresh herbs from the fresh flat leaf parsley and our fresh spearmint, our nana as well. And I can smell that our lamb meat is about done and I'm gonna take it out of the oven. I'm gonna let it rest a little bit before we shave it up and then I'm gonna plate all of our tasty toppings so we can finally make our shawarma sandwiches, our street food star sandwiches today. Take a look at our roasted to perfection leg of lamb. Look at this. Is that not luscious or what? So I had it resting for about 10 to 15 minutes or so when I removed it from the oven. Just so all of those delicious, luscious lamb juices can stay right in that beautiful piece of meat that we have. And now we're gonna carve this up because we wanna make our shawarma sandwich, finally! <laughs> So I'm just gonna start to sort of, oh my gosh, it's cooked perfectly. It's just so tender. I don't really have to work that hard and finally slicing it. Oh my gosh, it smells out of this world, you guys. You're gonna love making this street food star at home. No spit needed, right? I wanna actually just ladle some of those delicious juices that are sitting at the bottom of the roasting pan and I just want to sort of smother this meat with those delicious natural au jus lamb juices. Keep it nice and moist, right? Look at that. I know you guys are going to make this recipe at home because it is that good. Okay, now we're going to make our shawarma sandwich. Finally, we're going to take a nice a small loaf of our chibiz, our pita pocket bread. Just going to take the shaved meat. And if you don't want that much bread, you can actually just sort of uh, open up the pita bread into two halves. Okay, now we're gonna get our tasty toppings. I have our roasted red peppers. We're gonna go right on top of our luscious lamb meat, just like that. And our caramelized onions, our Vidalia onions, that we sprinkled a little bit of that sumac spice on. Beautiful. Loving this shawarma sandwich and some of our stewed tomatoes. And now for our tasty tahini sauce, we just want to sort of smother the sandwich with the sauce. It's always good when you're making our street food stars uh, and you're making tahini sauce for any of our dishes to make sure that you make a lot because people do love tahini sauce. And I want to add a little bit of freshness. I'm going to take a little bit of parsley and some mint. Can you believe that we're making this at home too? Who would have thought? Okay, now we're gonna roll this up. I'm actually gonna twist it towards me. I'm just gonna roll it around, just like that. Take a look at this sandwich, our shawarma, our shaved meat sandwich, our street food star. Gonna take a nice bite. Mmm, wow. It's absolutely incredible. I know that you guys are gonna love making our shawarma, our street food star sandwich right at home and no rotisserie needed. So until we cook again, I wish you and yours to always take global HANA, eat in happiness. Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen, authentic recipes for fresh and flavorful Mediterranean home cooking, is now available. The cookbook offers 125 recipes, 
hands-on instructions, and tips and tricks to help you make all of Julie's dishes from this season. Cook, create, and celebrate Julie's authentic recipes right at home. To order a copy, call 1-800-PLAY-PBS or order online at shoppbs.org. Join Julie Tabuli for fresh and flavorful Lebanese foods for your family and friends at julietabuli.com. Find Julie's authentic recipes for the tastiest Mediterranean home cooking. It's Julie tested and mama approved. Visit julietabuli.com today. Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen is made possible by... your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. Thank you. 